smaller. If I'm doing all right, I hope you are. I think I am. Tired old man. Well, things you, things you never think about happen. You know what I mean. I had one of the cats put down last night. Old Tom. He went from being the old stray tomcat to being Tom and being a pretty good old house cat for several years. Large heart, could breathe right, poor thing. Kind of felt bad about it. Trouble this morning, huh? <laughs> anyway. I just sometimes feel bad about playing God with a pet's life as much as I would your life. But you don't want poor things to suffer either. But then again, why do we want people to suffer? Weird, isn't it? How we think. We deserve far worse suffering than we get, don't we? We die because of sin. Sufferings in this world because of sin. Adam's transgression messed up everything, didn't it? As far as we're concerned. You know, and the glorification of himself. And I'll submit to you it is also the establishment of his kingdom. Not for a thousand years. Not for seven thousand years. Have you heard that one? That that, that thousand is just a symbol for a seven thousand year little literal reign on this earth. You take the thousand times the perfect number seven and it would really be seven thousand years. I heard that somewhere person that told it to me didn't believe it. They just read it in some old either <clears throat> dispensationalist or some kind of pre-millennialist book. But we can be thankful that our God's kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Good morning, brother. Good to see you this morning. God's kingdom's an everlasting kingdom. Daniel chapter 2, go there and read it. Read it slowly and consider what it actually says. In the days of these kings. And I will submit to you that all of those kings have already been. Shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom? And he did it. The kingdom was at hand when John the Baptist spoke. The kingdom was at hand when Jesus 
began his ministry and was dipped in the River Jordan by John. And at hand is not 22,000, excuse me, at hand is not 2,000 plus years. I'll submit it's not even 200 plus years. We are citizens of the kingdom of God. Fear not, little flock. It's your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. But there are people, even primitive Baptists, who are out there now trying to establish the kingdom, trying to enlarge the kingdom, trying to show the world that the kingdom is bigger than what they think it is. They don't realize they've been gifted the kingdom. That if they have a part in that blessed kingdom where Jesus reigns, it's because it's the gift of God that was given to them before the foundation of the world. It was purposed for them, and they are made citizens of it in this time world. It's not something we're waiting for. Jesus is set on the throne. He is the king over Zion. And he reigns. And you know there's a lot of ways his kingdom's not like the kingdoms of this world. But I only want to mention one of them this morning. It's not like the kingdoms of this world because all the citizens of this kingdom are kings and priests. He reigns over kings. He reigns over kings. Excuse me. Show me a kingdom in this world where all the subjects are kings. And I'll show you a kingdom that's ready to be divided amongst itself. Because every one of them is going to want to be the supreme king. Every one of them is going to want to be the big ruler. But it's not so here. Just as Jesus, the king of glory... When he was about to be betrayed, it said he laid aside his garments, girded himself with a towel, got him a basin, filled it with water, and did what? Did he give it to Thomas and say, here, Thomas, wash my feet right quick? No, he didn't, did he? Instead, he, the king, washed the feet of all of his apostles, including Judas. He washed the feet of his enemy. He washed the feet of his betrayer. That one whom he said it'd been better off if he'd never been born. That son of perdition. He washed his feet before they ate. He tells his disciples, or he told his disciples before that, actually, he that's the greatest among you, let him be the servant of all. You want to be great, be a servant.
But I know a lot of people think that that washing the feet needs to be literally done today, but I don't. Uh, because Peter, when he objected, before Jesus washed his feet, he said this to him. He said, Peter, what I'm doing now, you don't know. If literal foot washing was all that was involved in it, then Peter knew what was going on, didn't he? He was experiencing it. He saw him wash others' feet, and then he had his washed. That's all I'm going to say on that. But I do, you don't, you don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, I do. I see you washing the feet. In preparation for the meal. And by the way, those who practice that after the Lord's Supper is doing it just backwards. Jesus washed the disciples' feet. Then they ate a meal. And then he broke the bread and passed it and passed the cup. So if you go, if you think it is literal, at least please do it in the right order. Well, that's neither here nor there. I, I didn't want to get off on foot washing. What I wanted to get off was the kings and the priests. And we're here what? We are kings. We are priests. And we have a greater king over us. King Jesus. God manifest in the flesh. The word clothed in humanity. The only difference between his and ours is his was without sin. And ours is nothing but sin. He manifested the glory of God. We beg for a manifestation of the glory of God from our great King. Well, that's just a few thoughts, something I hope you think about. I'm going to get off here. Uh, I was a little late, had to get gas this morning, so didn't want to start till after I was done with that. I hope the Lord bless you, keep you, give you strength, show you mercy, all for Christ's sake. And show you your position as a citizen in the kingdom. That you didn't earn it. You didn't have to buy it. Remember what that Roman centurion told Paul? He said, yeah, you best be careful what you do here. That guy's a Roman. You're a Roman? Yep, sure am. I, my citizenship cost me a lot of money. I was free born. You didn't pay nothing for your citizenship. You were free born. You were born a citizen of the kingdom when you were born from above. Born again. Born of the Spirit. And I hope the Lord blesses you today. And Lord willing, we'll see you tomorrow.